Hello everyone, and welcome to my tutorial and playthrough of Resident Evil 3, the board game. The demo is currently available through Tabletopia.com. But before we actually get into the gameplay, I'm going to go over some of the basic rules with you so you can understand how a turn is actually played throughout this game. Those of you that have played Resident Evil 2, the board game, this should be an easy transition as there's only some minor changes, to be honest. Uh, but we're going to start with how a turn proceeds. So, the first part of any turn is the action phase, which is where you control your character and make their decisions. During each character's activation, they can perform up to four separate actions. You can make a movement in which you can place your character in any adjacent square so long as you do not have to cross a corner to do so. You can perform an attack against an enemy. You can open or close a door. You can search an item. You can trade with characters in the same square or an adjacent square. Or you can use an item card that is currently in your inventory. Once you've performed all four of your actions, then the enemies would perform what they call the reaction phase, in which a character that is in the same tile as an enemy will be attacked. If there is no character with an enemy in the same square, then all enemies will move closer towards the closest or active character. Now that also includes any tiles that are linked to the current tile through either an open doorway uh, and such. Once you have completed all reactions for all enemies on the same and or linked tiles, then we will have the tension phase where you will draw a tension card from the tension deck and resolve any particular actions that it requires of you. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the player reference cards, or enemy cards, and uh, we'll then go over how to actually perform an attack against an enemy. So. In the core box for Resident Evil 3 the board game there are four basic characters. Today I will only be playing with two of them. Uh, we will be using Jill Valentine and Carlos Oliveira. <clears throat> now Jill Valentine has her own reference card as does each other character available for Resident Evil 3 the board game. On the top you will find the character's name, how many dice they roll during an evade which you'll see with the claw and the arrow and then the amount of inventory they can carry, which is the backpack, and in Jill's case she can carry eight items, and she can roll two dice to make an evade against an enemy. Now down the left side of the character reference card, you will see the starting equipment for the character. In this case, Jill will start with a knife, a handgun, and one first aid spray. In the center of each card is any special abilities the character can perform during their turn, sometimes out of turn. Uh, in this case, if Jill were to roll a full evade on a blue dice when performing an attack, the attack is resolved as normal and then she may be placed in an adjacent square. Also, she has the ability last escape. The first time Jill becomes unconscious during a scenario, place her health track on danger instead, then place her in an adjacent square. This is much similar to an ability that Advanced Leon had during Resident Evil 2 the board game. Before we get to our enemy, since we are playing with Carlos as well, let's go ahead and take a look at him. Now, Carlos has the same evade dice, he gets to roll two, however he does have a slightly more limited inventory, only allowing him to carry up to six items. He starts out with a combat knife and handgun, as well as a set of handgun bullets. Now his special abilities are Combat Veteran. After performing an attack, Carlos may use an ammunition item from the weapon used in the attack without spending an action. So let's say Carlos fires at a zombie, and he uses the last three bullets in his handgun. As a free action, if he has handgun bullets in his inventory, he can then go ahead and spend that item to reload his weapon without using one of his remaining actions. Resourceful is his secondary ability, in which case Carlos gains one additional point of ammunition when he re reloads with a gunpowder item. Unfortunately, gunpowder items are not included in the demo, uh, so we won't be able to see that in play today. <coughs> Excuse me. On to our enemy reference cards. 
here we see our zombie reference card and the zombie has what they call a threat level in the first jerk we'll see at the top of his card now in the event that you have multiple enemies in the same square as you the threat level will determine which enemy will actually perform an attack against you during the reaction phase the higher the number the more likely they are to attack you the second set the basically directional pad and the number is how much movement an enemy gets during their reaction step and finally the heart I'm sure you can guess is how much damage they can take before they are put to rest for good <laughs> then next to the picture of said enemies there will be their attack profile now as the game progresses some enemies will become more difficult based on the color and symbol at the bottom of the tension card drawn on the last turn however in this particular case our basic enemies will have simply one attack now the enemy can attack you with a zero range which means they must be in the same square as the character to perform an attack on a successful attack they will deal one damage to our character on to performing an attack we're going to use our handgun for an example uh, here you see the name of the item that you have as well as in the top right corner the maximum ammo capacity for said weapon down where you'll see the crosshairs that determines how much distance or range you have with the weapon in this case line of sight so as long as you have a direct line between you and your target or a line able to be drawn from the center of your square to the center of their square without crossing a wall you're in good shape now for the handgun its basic attack is one blue dice and if you roll a I call it a ricochet symbol you will push the enemy away to an adjacent square and if you roll the full bullet hole hit then you will deal one damage to the target now at the bottom you'll see that the handgun has a special ability in which case the rapid fire and the rapid fire basically is a little wordy but essentially you can choose to fire one two or three bullets and for each bullet you fire with the weapon you will roll an additional blue dice so use two bullets you roll two dice three bullets three dice and yes in the event you are attacking an enemy with more than say one hit point or one damage point if you were to roll multiple hits they do stack however two ricochets will not make an equivalent of a damage you would simply push the enemy twice okay so let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay we're going to try, hopefully see uh, all the different possible elements of the game here at least basic elements I'm going to start out with Jill. We're going to go ahead and have Jill move one square. Two to move in with our zombie friend here. Now, Jill's pretty confident she can squeak by this one. She doesn't want to go ahead and start wasting a bunch of ammo right off the rip. So we're going to try to dodge past it. Let's see if we succeed. Okay. So, unfortunately, you can see here what the evasion symbols look like. There are three different types. There's a small, medium, and large evade. Unfortunately, I failed to roll any of the above. So, in this case, if you suffer damage from an enemy attack and they are in the same square as you, you may then push the enemy to an adjacent square. So I'm going to go ahead and push this zombie behind me and take one damage and that effectively makes you lose that action that you were attempting to perform. So my first two actions were to move, my third action was basically revoked because I failed to evade the enemy's attack, but I do still have a fourth action remaining, and we're going to go ahead and continue moving towards the door here. Now, now that all four of my actions have been resolved, the enemy will react, since there's nothing in the same square as me, he will simply then just move closer. And now we will draw from the tension deck. Now the 
attention deck has three different color cards. There's the <coughs> green cards, which are all clear, and they have a bit of flavor text on them. And at the bottom you'll see here, as I was talking about, the different color and symbol based on what the enemy's attacks may be if they have multiple possible attack profiles. There are also red as well as amber colored cards in the tension deck, each one significantly uh, able to provide a higher level of danger, sometimes spawning enemies, sometimes freezing you in place, so anything can happen. Now that our tension phase is resolved, we will go ahead and we can now take control of Carlos. So we're going to have Carlos move one square closer to the door. Go ahead and open the door. Alright, and on the other side of the door we have a zombie in front of us. Carlos is a soldier so he's he's pretty confident in his aim he's gonna go ahead and he's gonna use two shots so we're gonna go down to 13 we're gonna see if we can put this zombie down without wasting too much of our aim. have a small evade, but we also do have the ricochet, so I am able to push the zombie away. So we're actually just going to push him back one square. So our first action was to move, second to open the door, three to shoot. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move in to the room. That is our fourth and final action, therefore our enemy will react and come up on us. Nothing else to react to us, so we will draw a tension card. Looks like we are all clear again. The firelight dances and briefly you can stare and forget the unrelenting terror of the City of Ruin. Oddly enough, the name of the first available expansion for Resident Evil 3, the board game. That signifies the end of Carlos' turn, so we're going to move back to Jill. Jill's going to move her first action, open the door for two. Third action to step through the door. And our fourth action, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire three bullets into our buddy here. Being stubborn for me. There we go. Let's do it this way. So we're firing three bullets. kill him, but we did get two push results. So we moved, opened the door, came through, now we can push the enemy. We're just going to go ahead and push him back into the corner here. <clears throat> then, due to us firing a shot and an enemy being able to hear us through an open door, he's actually going to stagger closer to us because of the sound. Since that was my fourth and final action, each enemy will then react. Now had I took the time to close that door behind me, that enemy would have stayed in that hallway. He would not react as he would not hear us through the closed door. Now that each enemy has reacted, on to our tension phase. Again, we are all clear. So we're back to Carlos. So, 
Perlis has an enemy in his square. And we remember he has two dodge of dodge dice. So we're gonna try and just zip past this guy. See if we have any better luck this time. We do. We did manage to successfully evade him. So we're gonna move out of his square to the item here. And we're gonna spend an action to pick up the item. So let's see what we get. Ooh, lucky Carlos. He's stocking up on that handgun ammo. So in the event that we did need to reload our weapon, we would simply choose to discard this card and increase our ammo counter by 8 points since we are using the handgun. Alright, so our first action was to move, second was to pick up the item. Let's take three and four. I'm just trying to get away from this guy. Reaction phase, the enemy will move up. And it is time for another tension card. All clear again. Now, trouble with drawing a bunch of all clear cards in a row is eventually that means you're going to start running into a lot of bad cards really quick. If you're quick enough, sometimes it's not too bad, but some of those cards will really put you in a hurt. But enough on what may happen. Jill is going to take... actually, just we don't have to deal with him. We're going to go ahead and we're going to shut that door behind us for our first action. Our second action. Let's go ahead and let's fire two shots at this guy again. Should have been two dice. But we knew that one's a miss. Let's try it. Our second dice. This again. So the enemy will react and move into the square with us. However, due to her first ability, since we did roll the full evade on our attack, Joe gets to make a free action to move to an adjacent square. So that worked out. We drew the zombie close to us, and at the same time we managed to move away, leaving him in the dust behind us. So that's our second action. Our third action will be to move in with the item. We'll go ahead and spend our fourth action to pick it up. Ooh, handgun ammo for Jill as well. No complaints there. So since that was our fourth and final action, our zombie friend will relentlessly continue to pursue us, and we will draw our attention card. All clear. All right, back to Carlos. A lot of back and forth, but... <laughs> I'm not always a huge fan of digital style board game. This is actually the first time I've played a digital style board game was Resident Evil 3. Compared to the physical copy in my hand, I don't care for it as much. It's still fun, especially during the quarantine that's going on, but I cannot wait to get this game on my table and actually feel the pieces. So our first action is to move up to the door. We're going to open it. We're going to step on through. And then we're going to close the door behind us. We don't want that guy following us anymore. And then we have two zombies in the room with us that are going to move during the reaction phase. And we will draw our attention card. Alright. 
so we are still all clear and we're back to jail. One, two. Three to open the door. You know what? We have enough distance behind us with the other zombie, and we really don't want to, you know, run gung ho up into these other two. So we're going to just end our turn after three actions. This zombie's going to move up. And these two, since the door is open and this is now a linked tile, will unfortunately move up to Carlos. Might have been a better decision to leave the door closed, but c'est la vie. <clears throat> Alright, now that all reactions have taken place, one all clear. It is. Alright, Carlos. Ah, uh, let's see, what should we do? Let's fire three bullets, see if we can at least kill or push one of these guys away from us. So we were at 12, we will now be down to 9. Well, we do manage to push one of them. And since we're attacking with an enemy in the same square as us, since we did make a hit, the other one will actually not react to us or try to bite us. So this one will simply get pushed away due to the gunfire. This zombie will close in on Jill. Alright, so what's Carlos to do now? That was his first action. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and we're going to try and draw evade out of this guy. No luck. So, Carlos will take one hit and forfeit that action. Since we were bit, we do get to push him away. So, our third action smooth. Three and Let's get a little closer to Jill here. Then in our reaction, these two will move up on us. And sorry for my lack of speed. This is new to me. And Jill will have to make a reaction or an evade because of the zombie in the same square. <clears throat> no luck. So Jill's gonna take another hit. Jill will then push the zombie away from her. attention card. Uh oh. Red card. Okay, so for those of you that have seen the campaign on Kickstarter, you will know of the city dashboard where the danger level increases as you play. So if you were to hit medium danger level in the city, you would perform this additional action when you draw this card. If we were in the danger zone, or the red zone of the danger track, you would perform, in addition to the previous actions, this action as well. So, as it sits, we're only performing the main action, which is spawn a zombie in the same square as the active character. Just can't seem to get any luck. Doesn't help that I am rolling terribly today. Okay, so now that the tension is resolved, we are back to Jill. Alright, well, 
Let's have Jill fire three bullets at the guy that's in the same square as us. Let's hope we can manage to take him down and get an evasion so we can actually duck into the next room. Alright, well, we can either kill the zombie or push it two times. Let's go ahead and push it two away. This zombie's going to move in with us. And... We have the ammo saved up. It's not always smart to just go gung -ho guns blazing, but... We'll drop another three bullets into this one. And in case anyone is wondering, the enemies in the square with Carlos will not react to the gunshots. They won't move since they already have a meal in the same square as them, so why would they run away? On luck. Kill shot. Oh, we actually, now that I think of it, we would have killed this other song. That's okay. I like pushing them away, anyways. So this one's going away. This one will move a step closer. So that was our second action. Our third action will be to move into the next room with Carlos. crowded over there. You can have up to a max of four small base characters in the same square, so there's room. And we're going to try to shut the door behind us for our last action, but in order to do so, we will need to evade the two in front of us. Alright. Since we have two zombies in the square of us, normally you would need a small evade, which is just the partial circle. In this case, we have two enemies, therefore it's slightly more difficult to evade, and we do actually need the one here with the dotted uh, circle. So we do have a successful evade, and we can shut the door. That was our, our fourth and final action, so we will need to make another evade for the reaction phase. We succeed. So we get to move on to the tension deck. Let's see if I can place the card where I need. All clear. Alright, we're starting to get swarmed here, so Carlos is gonna drop down from nine to six firing three shots maybe if I could actually select dice when I try to so far we have two pushes let's see what our third result is uh, dead zombie now, unfortunately, some weapons do have a possible burst effect where you can uh, apply your damage results to all enemies in the same square. However, the handgun does not, so you can only choose one target. So we'll go ahead and kill the first zombie. And we're going to try and dodge past him. We're going to try and get out of this little death trap here. We have succeeded. So our second action will move up to our item. Pick it up. Why am I taking the whole deck? There we go. A green herb. 
You know what? Rather than put it in our inventory, since Carlos has taken a damage, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use that red herb for our final action. We're gonna go back up to five. Since the zombie is still in the same square as Jill, she's gonna have to try to evade him. Success. And our attention card. Which is all clear. Let's see if Jill has any more luck. Let's see. Actually, let's see if we can manage to reload our weapon first. Since the enemy is in the same square as us, we do have to try to evade to use an item. We are successful, so the handgun ammo will get discarded. Handgun will go back up by 8 to 12. For our second action, we're going to then fire three of those into the zone. We do manage to push them away. Our second action will go down here. Third action, we're going to move up to the door. Our fourth action, we're going to go ahead and open the door. <coughs> so, I know that we're going to let this zombie into the same square as us. And this one's going to take a step closer. Carlos. Carlos is going to move in with Jill. We're going to try and dodge past here. Boy, I am having no luck with my dodges today. So the zombie will bite us and get pushed away by one. So much for that green herb. So our second action fails. Third and fourth action. Actually, you know, our third action is going to be move in. We're going to shut the door, that way the zombies won't react to Jill. And now we can draw our attention card. All clear. Right. Thanks for, you know, Shutting us in with the zombies, Carlos. Joe's gonna open the door for one, two, and three. Move up to the item B, and we'll draw the item. Take Joe with us, apparently. Unlike Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, there are no restrictions on which enemy or which weapons which characters can use. Everything is universal. And in this case, we have a shotgun. So, get the shotgun, and we will then bring the shotgun ammo dial over to us. And that is our final action. Zombies will move up again. We'll draw 
more attention to her. Now, just so you know, in the event that the attention card ever runs out on you, that is game over. Or at least a failed scenario. Alright, so we're going to do something new here. We're going to use our first act with Carlos. We're actually going to trade with Jill to receive the shotgun. So we would then take over the shotgun card and the ammo dial. Then he's going to start rocking that puppy. So we're going to go down from 6 to 5. Now let's take a look at the shotgun. The shotgun starts with 6 rounds. Also has line of sight for targeting. And each time you fire you would roll 2 blue dice. On a ricochet symbol you will deal 1 damage to 1 target. And we do have a burst ability here on a full hit which would deal one damage to each enemy in the same square you're targeting. So we're going to try our luck and fire both of these guys here. And wow, no luck. They're both going to move up to us. Let's try that again. I mean, they're. I got a shotgun, they're standing, you know, all in my face. I shouldn't miss here, you would think, right? Oh my. Another complete miss. So we're going to get bit again. We're going to push the zombie one square behind us. And what to do? Now let's try and evade out of this room. I'm not having any luck with these guys. Let's see, we fired twice so far. Our third action is successful, and a lot of do a lot of dodge rolls in a row. And then our last action will be shut the door, so Jill's not getting swamped. clear. Alright, back to Jill. So Jill's gonna... We're just gonna try our luck with the handgun. Let's go down to six. I was hoping for, but we will push the zombie by the door away. This one will move up to us. So that's our first action. Second action, dodge. If I can ever gain control of the screen. I don't need to roll a second dice because I got the dodge I was looking for. So that's our second action. Third action to open the door. Our fourth to go through. So these guys will continue their relentless pursuit for now.
draw our attention. Fifteen cards for me and getting low. Oh no! Oh, not again. Spawn a zombie in the same tile as the active character. Well, we've got another little friend with us. <clears throat> Alright, so... For Carlos' first action, we're going to attempt to shut the door behind us. We do. Then we're going to fire three shots into this guy. We're going to go back to our handgun for a minute. We're having no love with that shotgun. to kill it. Third action will then be two. One and fourth action in front of the door which is an event card that we will now draw. And this one is not part of the rules for the mission, since there are two different types of tile. One, some of the events may be mission specific, this one is not, so we're going to take a look. The last shot didn't sound right, but there's no time to check the chamber. Place this card covering one of this character's non-knife weapon cards. While this card is covering weapon, it may not be used to perform an attack. If the weapon is reloaded, remove this card from the game instead of increasing the ammunition. Well, boo, that's no fun. We still got some bullets left in our shotgun. So let's go ahead and stick with the shotgun, and we're just going to cover up our handgun here. Along with some bullets. And now we will draw our attention card. Which is all clear. For Jill's turn, she's simply going to move up to the door. She does not want to open it as she does not... doesn't know what's on the other side. So wait for Carlos. All clear. Alright, so Carlos is going to go ahead and open the door for one. Step two for three. Or, I'm sorry, two. And three to get out of the map. Since Carlos is no longer on the board, there's no reaction and no tension step. And then Jill's going to follow suit and do the same. I definitely enjoyed the demo. My rolls could have been a little better, and you know, I apologize. It's my first time using uh, really a digital platform. I'm not 100% great with the controls, and I'm using a laptop with a touchpad. I don't have a mouse, so that makes things a little difficult too. But I really enjoyed playing the demo. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And if you've never played Resident Evil 3, go ahead and jump on and give it a try for yourself. They are doing late pledges still. This does look like it's going to be an amazing game. I loved Resident Evil 2, and I cannot wait for this to hit my tabletop. Thank you guys, and hope you enjoy your day.